time Monday morning. I'll be cooking my lunch as usual. And I just want to talk about something that came to me today when I was uh, I was in the sauna. I go to the sauna every day because it's uh, I just like it. Well, I know it's got loads of health benefits and all stuff like that, but to be honest, it just makes me feel nice when I get out, and it's uh, I just enjoy it. Mm. Nice and relaxing. Well, at least it is for me, and that's kind of what I want to go on about today. So I tend to, because I go at the same time every day, I tend to coincide with certain people, and one of the people that I uh, coincide with, not every day, but maybe once a week or something like that, is a guy that talks to himself, like whispers to himself, so I think I've, I've mentioned this in one of the other videos, and it, it does actually do me hell. But today, <coughs> I, um, I, I know, I got in after him for some reason, he was early today. And so he, when I was in there, he was, I don't know how long he'd been there, but he, he was, uh, he looked like he was suffering from the heat. And so that's always what happens when he, the worse it gets, the more he starts to whisper. And it suddenly, it just occurred to me how, how it's like him, like both of us being in the same place under exactly the, the same objective conditions, you know, we're both at the same temperature, you know, it's everything that he's experiencing, I'm experiencing, but it's, it's obviously not the same conditions. Because the way he was in there suffering, it's just not, I wasn't in there suffering. So, you know, we've been in there longer and things like that. But he just, I've seen him lots of times. He's, he doesn't have a pleasant experience in the sun. And so it just made me think the way, it's, that's just such a metaphor for life in general. The way you know several people can be in what you'd objectively call the same situation, but just have completely different experiences, and like completely different takeaways, and you know it's just it's it's as if his experience and my experience would just have nothing in common. <coughs> I think that that obviously happens all the time, like just all the time. Yeah. Everywhere we go, all the conversations that we have, you know, you can literally be talking to the to someone, and although you're exchanging these, you know, words are going backwards and forwards. You know, backwards, back and forth between them. The what each of you perceive from the conversation can be completely different. I suppose that's what, you know when we talk about we say that we talk past people and things. I mean, it, it's exactly that. It's not like I, I, I know I haven't made any kind of discovery yet, but I think it. We, I mean, we see it all the time when you see some sort of debate about whatever the topic is, it doesn't even matter. But you see people s seem to be, they're not actually having the same conversation. They'll be bringing up facts or opinions or whatever. But they're not engaging in the same process or they're not they're not like on the same thread if you if you know what I mean I mean maybe that's just you know maybe that's just what reality is 
I mean, it's the same way when different people listen to the same piece of music, you have completely different perceptions of it. I mean, I know this because I mean, I'm into I'm into metal and you know quite extreme metal as well. I mean, I like I like all I like lots of types of music, but I notice that when I'm listening, you know, there are certain things will be like either particularly shouty or you know brutal guitars or you know like really you know, blast beats galore and stuff, and it seems to take me to a place that other people don't get from that type of music like in the same way that I just cannot stand jazz I don't know why I just it's not just that I don't like it it annoys me so you know I know I must be missing out on something because lots of people like jazz and I just I don't know it's, it's beyond taste it's, it's just something in it that's just Until, like the collective, I don't know what to call it. Like not, not exactly the collective psyche, but like maybe the, the zeitgeist, the the way of perceiving things that's just accepted amongst everyone. Until we can actually converge on the fact that you know we're not actually having the same experience. We we might be we might be occupying the same physical space, but just different things are going on, you know. And we're, we're, you know we're go we're going to have I think we're just doomed to be going through the same processes of. people are so easy to manipulate because the people who realise that this is happen happening and you know that it's a natural tendency then they can they can completely capitalise on it and just manipulate people. You know, you know if you think about like what politics is I mean, it literally is the manipulation of people for, you know, other people's benefits. So, I mean, the whole, I mean, why, what does a political party mean? What, what's it, what's that all about? So I guess maybe once upon a time, it actually made sense because people's, like actual living experience was just so completely different you know between say classes or regions or whatever that if they didn't collectivize then the the group of people who were just more I don't want to say intelligent but sort of who are capable of just playing the system better by moving in the same direction, then they would always win out over the less educated or, you know, less you know, able to explain themselves. So, you know, you'd have, that's where the trade unions that's what a lot of that was about, is just, you've got a bunch of, a lot of people who all they know how to do is work because they didn't really get much education and, you know, they just don't even have that good a life where you can 
be thinking about improving your lot in life and you know maybe you I'd love it if my child didn't have to go down the mines or whatever. That wasn't a thing because we come from a place where you know, survival meant you know, going to work and having something to do. And so there'd be communities that had only known mine for generations. Because before that they were probably, you know, just agricultural labourers or whatever. And so the way to improve their condition was obviously collectivising. So when you based when when you've got issues that are just so fundamental, like they're not down to you don't have to intellectualize very much whether you've got enough money to eat and things. So that's kind of it's easy to get people together. It's not it's not ideological particularly wanting to be able to feed your family, that's not some kind of like what my ideology is that I would like to buy clothes for my son. You know, that's not a thing. It's whereas now in the West, you know, poor people have mobile phones. You know poverty that we suffer, well not we, but that is present in our society, if you compare it to like the poverty in you know, parts of Africa or you know South America or something, I mean, you know where people are literally starving, they laugh at the fact that, you know, some people, what we call poor, you know, it's just not, it's not that, it's not the same perception of poverty at all. It's very, it's, it's totally relative. And so, but that doesn't mean that poverty doesn't affect people. It's just a different type of poverty because I think there were studies done, for instance, where they, they analysed wages in the workplace and how happy someone felt at work didn't actually have all that much to do with how much they earned. It was more to do with this, their level of job satisfaction was all about how much they earned relative to the people that they worked with. So that's exactly the situation with poverty and stuff. So, as I was just saying, um, you know, political parties today, it's sort of, the function is to allow people to stop taking responsibility for themselves so they can just delegate entirely you know I associate I identify with this type of you know this demographic and so the political party can look after my the, 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 the idea is that they look after my demographic so now I don't really have to worry about what's going to be said and you know, how they look after it. They told me they're going to look after it. So that, that's it then. I don't have to worry. And, you know, this is a problem because the actual political system is designed to get people to disengage. It's just Let's ju let's just let them worry about everything. I'll I'll take care of it. You know, don't you worry. I'll look after you because those guys are really bad. And if it wasn't for me, then they they want to take everything off you. These bad people. And it doesn't matter what side you look at it. I mean, if you, you know, if, if you look at um, 
you know, people who who are saying left wing would they get the the political narrative is look, those rich people are oppressing you. And if you know, if you don't have someone like us looking after you or looking out for you, then you're just gonna end up with nothing. You'll have no rights, you know, you'll be working down the mines eighteen hours a day and you know you know, if you don't have you know, if you don't have like a big government looking after you and you know, taking money off those nasty rich people, then you won't have anything. Whereas if you think of like the people who are on the right, like today everything is like, oh, it's all turning communist, communist this, communist that. You know, if you have a healthcare system, socialized health is communism. You know, if only communism was only socialized health, you know what I mean? You know, there's lots of things that communism did extremely bad. Let's face it. You know, it's not like communism isn't. Although people will tell you that communism is about, it's just sharing and stuff like that. Of course, it isn't. It's a total ideology. It's a leveling thing to just, you know, it, it equalizes everyone in poverty, and then it's based on. In fact, I think when like Lenin and you know Stalin, you know they, they well. Lenin started off with communism, but then it became Leninism because, like, communism doesn't work. So you know, it's not like Mao was communist. It started like that, but then it became Maoism. You know why is that? Well, because when stuff doesn't work, you have to change it and you have to inject ideologies, and also you have to get rid of the useful idiots that were on that were there on the way up. So back to, you know, we, I'm living in, I live in Spain, and there's a socialist government right now, and lots of people are talking about it as if it's just like, you know, it's, it's crazy, it's communist, and the thing is, it, it, collectivism, well, I mean, not not acting as a group, not like looking out for your own, not for like collective self-interest, but when you just sign on for something that takes off, takes your identity, then it's totalitarian by definition. That's almost what everyone wants. So th there's a massive totalitarian aspect to all governments, because it's kind of, it's, it's it's almost by definition what you want when you go and vote. I mean, why do you vote? Voting is saying, I want my, I, I, I want what I like to be imposed on someone else. That's why you vote. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's any mystery to this, although maybe, you know, people listen to this or think, oh, that's not what it's about. It's about, you know, it's about fairness and stuff. That's, What's fairness got to do with it? Why is it fair? I mean, why is it even fair if like three people decide something and two people don't want it? Why is it fair that they get made to do it? I, d I don't know. It doesn't. I don't understand how. Why is mob rule fair? I mean, it doesn't seem to be like it, it never used to be the definition of fairness of like, hey, why don't we string up someone? You know, we don't like that one person. Well, we've decided that we're going to string them up, or it's a dogma, it's democracy, we all took a vote. It doesn't really seem coherent to me. But here we are, all of us living in the same society, but we're all having different perceptions of it. And the thing is, we always will, and it's not even a bad thing, it's a good thing. You know, it's a beautiful thing that we all you know, perceive the world differently and see different things. And, and that way, you know, someone else can have a different experience and they can point that out to you. They can show you, you know, the beauty in the situation or, you know, the just 
showed you something that you, you might never have thought of if you didn't have a conversation with that person. But we're not gonna, it's not gonna happen. We, 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 we're not gonna be able to just accept that everyone else has a way of seeing things. If, if we're told that we all have to just agree we have to see everything's black and white. You're for or against. And if you're not, then you know there's something wrong with you. Then you know there, there are so many subtleties in the situations that have happened. You know, right now, 15th of April. You know, there's lots of bad things going on in the world. And you know, I think potentially we're closer to World War Three than we ever have been during my lifetime. I, mean, I don't know. I'm not talking about times when blips were seen on radars and people have decided not to launch all the nuclear arsenals because they thought that they were being attacked and things like that. Maybe that was closer. But what I mean is we've got narratives occurring at the moment where people are, are polarised you know regarding certain issues and it's not there's no logic to it I mean I wonder you know would people people prepared to like have Civilization end just because you know because of like terrorist acts or because of you know a country invading another country or you know do, is that what is that what it means to be principled to like be prepared to die for what someone else told you? I mean I'm. I think that I would be prepared to die for my principles, you know, or, you know, or to defend something that's mine, or defend my family. You know, I, I think I would. I mean, there's a recent thing here in Spain where an 82-year-old guy, um, he, sh he, m he shot a burglar came into his house and now he's going to go to prison for murder but what happened was this the burglar was armed and he broke in and so the the guy who lived in the house was also armed I think it was in some rural part where like you know people some people you know there are more like firearms and stuff than in cities and so he some guy breaks in in the middle of the night he's armed and so the other guy shot him and killed him. So he's going to he's going to jail. It's like, well, what what should he have done? Should he allow himself to be shot? I mean, do you just is that is that what we're saying? Because because law, because government, you know, because saying things like that, you're prepared take the responsibility and defend yourself. It's it's almost by definition you 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 you're going against you know the, the culture of delegating everything to the state. And I'm not saying that I don't understand why people phone the police when people break into the house. But you know, not you, you must know that no one is going to come and help you. So what if you know that and you accept it then why would you even why would you consider I mean unless you're just going to say take whatever you want fine I don't care you know but I don't know I, I don't understand why anyone would condemn someone for defending their, their own house but you know that's that's his perception and he's there acting on it and so, 
I think where I want to just want to point out is <clears throat> if we're th- the only way that collectivism works and the whole thing of us saying that you know there are two parties, three parties. I mean, even if there was a hundred parties, you know, there's absolutely millions of people in every country. Even if there was ten parties, how does that somehow represent? every possible spectrum and nuance of opinion that you can have. I don't even think that anyone, you know, if any, it's not, parties aren't football teams. You know, I support Liverpool and I will do, it doesn't matter, I just do. And I don't care if they go down to the fourth division or whatever, I'll always support Liverpool and I won't support anyone else. But political parties can't be like that because the idea is that it's based on some kind of ideal, but you can't, people can't collectivise to that degree that everyone believes absolutely everything of a political party. But what's worse is it's not even being sold to us as, you know, we represent this and if we do this then all these good things will happen. It's always, we represent this but they represent something else and they are bad. And if you don't vote for us, it's like you're voting for them. And that's just, it's a complete trick. You know, it's like, you know, if we applied that same logic to everything, nobody would do anything. It's like, oh, don't go in the sauna, because it's terrible, and there's a guy in there, and he whispers, and he'll drive you nuts. It's like, well, you know, that's not what my experience of the sauna is, but it could be. I could explain my situation, my experience of the sauna exactly like that, because it kind of is. You know, if you go into the sauna, it is your own private hell for however long you're in there. But there are good things to, you know, it's not so black and white. And, but no one would actually think, like, logically, that they're going to delegate the like identity of whether they are a person who does sauna based on some political ideology. But we're going that way with with people that are so like they're they're filling the hole that they have in the in like I don't know in the in the soul where they are just you know where they you know, they make room for their own um, individual interpretation of just everything that's going on. I mean, we do all see things differently, and, and that should be celebrated. It shouldn't be forced out. You can only do one thing or another. It's like, you know, why is it that almost every, you know, everywhere in the West, it's like if you're like left wing, then like you're all you love the identity politics and. You know, you're all pro immigration and you're pro, um, you know, LGBT, what you know, rest of the letters type thing. Whereas if you're right wing, then you know you're, um, I don't know, what the white right wingers, you know, anti immigration and, um, you know, you 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 can't stand it, you know, this gender ideology or, you know, but. If you didn't identify yourself as one thing or another, and you were just allowed to just, you know, take things, you know, personally, then there wouldn't be all this kind of, well, what can I put, like dogma. It's it's just dogma. People are so dogmatic. I think we're more dogmatic now than we were in the Middle Ages. You know. The, you know, people were were oppressed by the church. You know, and not everyone had to at least say that they believed otherwise. You know, bad things can happen. And that's just what we're like now. If you know, if we don't, if you don't subscribe to certain, well, if you subscribe to a certain political ideology, then you've got to fit in with all these certain dogmas of your clique. Otherwise, you're an outcast. And so, apart from the fact that 
you know, I'm an anarchist, and so I don't believe that I should be able to choose what you have to do or another person has to do. I also don't believe, I also think that it's completely ridiculous and naive to somehow think that we all fit in, you know, three, you know, one, two, three ideal ideologies, and that's what you need to vote on. And, like, and that, because based on that, is how we can run a certain landmass with like 40, 40, 50 million people in it for four years. We're just like running in this direction, right? How does that make sense? It's just, I don't I'm, I think I'm having difficulty explaining it because I'm so, I just see it so bizarre. And I know I didn't used to think it was so bizarre. In fact, I, I, I remember the time when I couldn't conceive of the idea of like not not having democracy. But obviously I what I mean by democracy is just like five people vote, three people want one thing, two people want something else. And so we just do what the f you know, it's as if the five people always all wanted the same and they don't. And that's just the way we, we actually if that if someone says that that shouldn't be the case, it's as if they're just crazy person it's like well you don't love democracy how can that possibly be and it's like I don't like mob rule and I also think that we shouldn't we shouldn't encourage people to stop thinking about things so maybe that's the takeaway from this is the fact that we all perceive things differently is absolutely the best thing about perceiving things. And we shouldn't be trying to put them into, you know, the boxes of are you red, are you a blue? I was, you know, where do you fit in this? There's only, you know, the, there's no subtlety to anything. <clears throat> and it's even worse, it's as if we really should all get together and make everybody follow the same rules. I mean, why? You know, there are, there are fundamental rules that we have to follow because, you know, we're sentient beings. You know, and that's what natural law is all about. You know, just basically, it's the golden rule. Don't do something to someone else that you don't want done to you. You know, don't steal people's property. Don't murder. You know, I think, I think that's just what we need for a society. I do think that people in our interactions most people don't you know we, we're ignorant of all the laws it's only when they want to force you to do something or they want to punish you for, for thinking a certain way that all of a sudden the, the list of laws comes out and oh we'll apply this and you said that and you did this and it's not it's not logical and people I think we know it's not logical and maybe that's what makes us gravitate towards it more is that we know it's 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 too hard to actually say the emperor's got no clothes and so we don't want to go there. I don't know, that's that's just basically the things that have been going through my head today. So anyway, I think my lunch is done. Today I've got some cod, some cauliflower. Shiitake mushrooms and beans. Yum yum. Oh, and a red pepper. So, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.